is this about to be the longest video I've ever filmed <laughs> in my entire life? It actually might be. It's gonna be a really good test for me to cut the rambling, <laughs> to cut the crap. But we all know that cutting the rambling is really not my strong suit. So I hope you're ready to be sat here for the next four and a half hours. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. How is it going? I hope you're all doing really well. I hope your new year has got off to the most amazing start. So I had this grand plan of being here doing this exact video somewhere between like the 1st and the 5th of January to really start things in a nice organized way. I had this plan to like high kick, girl boss, super motivate, karate chop. The vision in my head is Say You'll Be There music video Spice Girls. That's that's the vibe that I was looking for to kick off this year. But then I got a chest infection which basically turned me... The most accurate representation I can think of is King Theoden um, in the two towers before they like sort him out. But I'm back to being able to breathe a bit more like someone under the age of 90 years old. So let's do this. For anyone who was invested after I did my 10 before the end video, I actually hit my reading goal of 50 books on New Year's Eve at about 10 to 4 in the afternoon before we went out. But hey, if I ever needed proof that I work best under pressure, there it is. So here's my highly scientific, very accurate tier ranking system for us to get stuck into. And I was inspired to, rather than just doing like five stars, four stars, I was inspired to name the tiers, the kind of like levels of greatness that I experienced reading these books by very specific types of bookmark. So the fanciest of fancy pants, top tier is gonna be personalized and foiled. We're talking the best of the best, the creme de la creme, she deserves the world, she's beauty and she's grace, she's Miss United States. Then we have little embroidered creation, an absolute fave, something very special, really stole my heart. Next up is cutie paper freebie. We enjoy her, we appreciate her, she's important, she does the job, you know? Next up is crumpled chocolate bar wrapper. Uh, you find it in the bottom of your bag when times are really hard, you're caught short, there might be like one bite left over. Maybe not entirely the best, something that I wouldn't necessarily reach for again. And last but not least, although Technically, actually, yes, the least. It's someone else's folded corner. Look, the irony is not lost on me here because I will hold my hands up and say that I am very much a corner folder. Not when it comes to someone else's books, like a library book, absolutely not. But for my own books, I'm very much a corner folder. And I will acknowledge that there is a special deep circle of hell for those people. Um, and I guess I will see you there. So let's do this. Oh, and don't forget that you can follow me over on Goodreads and over on Storygraph. They're gonna be linked in the description box down below, along with anywhere else that you might wanna hang out with me. So let's get stuck in, I'm excited. Right, I need to press screen record. Can I actually remember how to do a screen recording? I am 85 million years old. Uh, I think we do this, new screen recording. Oh wait, I don't want that. Number one, Mrs. S by K. Patrick. I finished this on New Year's Day, actually, of 2023 and really kicked things off on a major high. I found this to be really atmospheric. It's really powerful. It's about queer desire, it explores identity, and it's set against like a dark academia girls' school. This one is very much no plot, just vibes. But when I think about my reading last year, this one really stands out as one that I very much enjoyed. The Skeleton Key by Erin Kelly. This wasn't quite what I wanted it to be, but nevertheless, it's a very addictive little thriller. It's full of twists and turns in like a treasure hunt style mystery which is inspired by this famous picture book that has a really obsessive fan following and it's all about how its legacy affects the family of the author. So even though it wasn't quite as captivating as I wanted it to be it's definitely still a little embroidered creation. Number three The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. I've talked about this one before because I remember expressing like how I had such high expectations for this and it just didn't quite hit them. I so wanted to love this and all its kind of gothic -y vibes set in New York. A girl assigned to intern at a museum called the Cloisters and she becomes tangled up in academic circles and strange mysterious tarot card readings and really toxic relationships. Like, oh, all of that stuff just sounds so perfect. But unfortunately it just dragged for me a little bit and I think I built it up too much. I think it's probably my bad, to be honest. I've talked so much about this one. I'm glad my mum died by Jeanette McCurdy. So heartbreaking and also hilarious, which sounds like a strange combination, but it's the most beautiful combination. A really powerful, honest memoir that's been ridiculously popular for a very good reason. I genuinely don't think I know anyone who's read this and didn't absolutely love it. Pre-loved by Lauren Bravo. This is a really sweet little story about a woman whose life just kind of like descends into disarray. And as part of trying to like sort herself out, she starts volunteering at a charity shop. The bit that I really liked was it's alongside little like snippets of very short flashes of stories 
about items in the charity shop and like where they've come from and the people that they link to. It's very lovely and wholesome. It's one of those like chicken soup for the soul kind of stories. Things We Do To Our Friends by Heather Darwin. So this is toxic female friendships that all have perfect hair. Dark academia setting, tick, that kind of like claustrophobic desperation to try and fit in. The main thing I remember is that it has a completely deranged opening and a story that feels pretty dark and unexpected. Delightful. Oh, one of my unexpected favourite reads of the year. I'm still surprised I loved this as much as I did, to be honest. The Virgin Suicides. The most stunning, most haunting prose I've read for a really long time with this very kind of like dreamlike feel to it. Even though it's a very bleak story, it feels very dreamlike and hazy. It's the story of teenage girls through the male gaze. Very much like a touch grass after reading scenario, but it is amazing. Straight to the top for me. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, another one that has been talked about to death, but it, it really is a wonderful story. Latvona by Otessa Moshveg. Wow. This is the epitome of, I wasn't sure what I'd just seen but I knew it was time for me to leave. And I was gonna say it's like a twisted fairy tale, but there's another one in this list which I would sum up more as a twisted fairy tale. This one takes it way more to the extreme. It is pretty depraved. It is really pretty gross. Very much not an enjoyable reading experience, uh, but strangely compelling. Definitely like read at your peril though. Careering by Daisy Buchanan. This is a very enjoyable, light read. It's about the unglamorous truth of being an intern. I'm working in the magazine industry, which is something that I've very much like been there, done that. So I enjoyed how much I related to a lot of this story. It does have slightly cringeworthy like super millennial style humour, but the relatability of the characters I did really enjoy about this story. And the themes of like burnout and creative self-doubt and definitely the, the realities of what happens when the dream job is not necessarily actually the dream job. Clytemnestra, this is an absolute gigantic mega mammoth five stars for me. A Greek mythology retelling that puts a wronged powerful woman hellbent on revenge centre stage. Sign me up. It was always gonna be a guaranteed hit for me, but even so, this book is impressively vast. Like the knowledge that's gone into this is crazy impressive. Beautiful lyrical writing style that I think you really need to make a Greek mythology absolutely slap. And honestly, I don't think it's dramatic. I mean, maybe it is a bit dramatic to call this a masterpiece, but I genuinely think this book is a masterpiece. So far out of all of these, it's going straight to the top spot. The absolute ultimate number one top spot for me. There might be one more in this list which overtakes it, but it is creme de la creme. Night Crawling by Layla Motley. We're on a hot streak here because this is another five stars from me. This is one of those books though that you kind of have to psych yourself up for a little bit. It is such a gut punch of a read that you kind of forget that you're reading fiction because it feels so authentic and important. I felt like it was one of those really powerful stories that just had to be told. Um, it's set in Oakland about a young black teenager who's struggling to make ends meet and it's all about like the corruption of the police there. Um, it'll make you angry and sad but it is a beautiful really important book. <gasps> My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Oh man I loved this so much. Another one of my reading highlights of the year, I think. Set in an 80s high school, spooky, sad girl stuff, uh, teenage friendships, and a healthy dollop of horrific demonic possession. I was truly obsessed. Even though it's completely mad and crazy, it is personalised and foiled for me, that one. I had such a good time reading that book. Atlas Six by Oliver e. Blake. So this is a dark academia fave, turns up on every dark academia list you ever see. Um, and it's about a secret society of magical figures, which every 10 years permits six new members. And this story is a battle between those potential new members to see who can make it into the society. Should have been right up my street, but <laughs> honestly, this book is genuinely too intelligent for me. And it sounds really weird to say, but it's not my kind of magic. This is like science magic. And I love like cozy, warm, witchy magic. Very different realms. Having said that though, here I am probably about to pick up the next one in the series because I have remained intrigued enough by it. So interpret that how you will. How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. This is another one that has been so popular over the last couple of years. I don't need to talk about this. I enjoy rooting for an anti-hero as much as the next Taylor Swift. That, that's always a really fun time to me. I love an anti-hero character, but there was a lot of filler in this for me, um, which stopped me getting really like addicted and hooked to reading it. Um, I just wanted more frog related murders. That was the bit that stood out to me. Number 16 already, we're doing pretty well. So Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. This is one of those like TikTok romance sensations that people are absolutely obsessed with. I would sum this up as reading an episode of Made in Chelsea on steroids. The characters are absolutely unbearable, so unlikable. 
And yet, the big twist, honestly, like highbrow, well-respected thrillers could never. This one is very enjoyable in an infuriating kind of way. Vanishing <laughs> Half by Britt Bennett. I know that I love this, but I can't actually remember very much about it. So that really splits where I feel like this should go on the tier ranking. Do you know that I absolutely loved the way that different female narratives through history were all like interwoven together to build like a really rich family tapestry? And it was just particularly great storytelling. It felt like a very fulfilling, rich, satisfying read. The School for Good Mothers. This was a wild ride. I'd kind of forgotten about this one. It's actually really interesting to refresh my mind and look at everything that I did read. This is a dystopian horror where mothers are sent to like a prison slash school to improve their maternal skills and maternal instincts under the help of some very creepy robot babies that are sort of like half real and half not real. It's pretty twisted. It's actually like quite a haunting dystopian story. Extremely bleak, it's very clever, it's very uncomfortable and just a really unique story actually. I really enjoyed this one. Although enjoyed is the wrong word because it's bleak. Belladonna by Adeline Grace. So a friend actually gave this one to me because she thought that the concept was right up my street. She hadn't read it, but saw the blurb and was like, I know someone who'll like this one. And she was not wrong. I thought the concept for this story was amazing. It's a girl who loses her family at a young age. So she's passed like from pillar to post and she basically leaves a trail of mysterious deaths behind her. And as a result of all of that, she discovers that she can communicate with death himself. But the romance that develops is really questionable. Something about it just really didn't sit right with me and that kind of stopped how much I could let myself love this book. Um, and it also involves a uh, quite frankly insane amount of scones. Heartburn by Nora Ephron. You know me, I am an autumn romance loving girly. Nora Ephron films make up the majority of my personality at this point. So it made sense to me to give her books a whirl for the first time as well. And this was a very quick, entertaining little story. It has some really funny moments and a genuine sense of sadness at times as well, which I did connect with. I didn't find anything in this that I could really sink my teeth into to like properly connect with. A lot of it is very outdated now as well. And it's one of those books that has loads of recipes in it. And if there's one thing about me, I am gonna skip over a recipe or a song whenever they pop up in a book. <laughs> Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This was a twisty little one. So Mary is married to a Marie biologist called Leah. Leah has returned from an underwater submarine mission that went drastically wrong, saw her trapped in a submarine for a really long time. But it's not just like straightforward storytelling, this is really supernatural and strange and unknowable. You can never quite pinpoint what the real truth is that's going on here, but it's kind of an exploration of love and grief and letting go of people and how all those things overlap in such a messy way. The writing in this, though, the prose in particular, is so suspenseful and haunting and creepy and like proper kind of like has a real horror feel to it in an understated kind of way. Oh, the ending of this as well left such a lump in my throat. It was just unlike anything I'd ever read. Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. This is actually the second time that I've read this book, so I won't go into this. Um, I just really wanted to get into this series, but I think I'm just gonna have to admit defeat. I just don't, I just can't get it. I just don't get it. I know everyone says that you need to read book two to get into it, so should I do that? Because if you tell me to, I will. Life of Pi by Jan Martel. If I am being really brutally honest, this was an extremely tedious read for me. It's quite slow paced and there's also some like animal brutality in it, uh, which I really did not enjoy. I didn't see it coming and I really did not enjoy that. I'm actually going to be a real bad boy and put that in the bottom tier. This is the first book that's landed on the bottom tier. That is someone else's folded corners to me. I just did not get on with that book at all. And I hate to say it, I hate not giving books their flowers. I respect writing and authors and the achievement of books so much, but personally, not for me. Free Love by Tessa Hadley. We're taking some real like left and right hand turns here. So this is set in like the swing 1960s of London, which is a really cool setting. And the main character Phyllis, very kind of spontaneously leaves her stereotypical classic housewife life behind. This is one of those really kind of well-rounded books. It's just really well written. You can pick it up and know that you will confidently enjoy it as a good story. We're halfway through, this is book 25, Flaneurs by Lauren Elkin. I think this is the only non-fiction 
on this entire list. I'm just not a non-fiction girly. It's about walking through and exploring cities as a woman. Um, and it's kind of like a blend of memoir and social history and literary criticism all wrapped in together. And it's a bit of a reflection on how like the places that we live affect our identities and how being present in a space and experiencing a space and being seen within a space is a feminist issue. I found it really interesting. I'm going to land this somewhere in the healthy middle, I think. Um, and it was a nice little thought provoker. Yellow Face by RF Quang. The amount of times that I've talked about how much I enjoyed this. Five stars across the board. Wow, I forgot about this. I love this book. Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. This is a very simultaneously heartwarming and heartbreaking story of a female friendship that spans across decades, basically spans across a lifetime. It has truly wonderful characters that you will fall in love with and it genuinely feels like a very wonderful, comforting hug every time you pick it up to read another chapter. Really good, actually, by Monica Heisey. I'd seen snippets of this floating around online. I knew it was by one of the writers of Schitt's Creek. I thought I was gonna be absolutely obsessed with this story. But being really honest, I actually found this a little bit annoying just because the main character, she's obviously written to be this way. She's one of those kind of complex, confusing characters, but she is slightly insufferable but it is really funny the observations of this story are really relatable and funny and this would be a great one to take on holiday i was gonna go for cutie paper freebie for really good actually but i think it's actually lower end of lil embroidered creation because i loved the ending the ending felt really genuine and i really connected with it things we never got over by lucy score TikTok got me real good with this one. As we all know, those romances can be so hit and miss. I think this one is on the upper end of the scale. If you can kind of suspend the feelings, I feel like all of these romances just have such toxic elements to them and to enjoy these stories, you just kind of have to put that to one side. This one though, I did actually really like the characters. I felt like they had proper personalities and just like a little bit more grit to it than you quite often find in these like TikTok popular romances. It is basically a Sons of Anarchy fan fiction, right? I'm gonna have to disclaim with this one though. I can't ignore this fact. Um, there is actually a bonus 51st book here on the list because I actually picked up the sequel for this from the library, which is called Things We Hide From The Light. And it is my one and only DNF of the year. And I never DNF anything. DNF is did not finish. I could not finish it. It was not for me. I don't know why I clicked with the first one and did not click with the second one. Next is a little novella, which is called The Hedge Witch by Carrie Thomas. I can never resist anything witchy and cozy and comforting. So when I saw this on the library shelf, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll give it a try. I just thought it looked super cute and it was very sweet. Uh, it's basically made for curling up on a Sunday afternoon on the sofa during spooky season. Um, it has a very young, breezy feel to it. It was a bit twee. Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. I didn't do a lot of thrillers last year, but this was like your classic kind of thriller. It's full of like complex sibling dynamics, really effective tension building, which is so important with a thriller, obviously. It's like the number one building block. Uh, full of deceit and lies and betrayal and all that good stuff because a mother goes missing and accusations start getting thrown around left, right and centre because the Delaney children start to suspect that their father might have had something to do with it. And as you can probably imagine, it all gets very juicy and messy. <gasps> Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I loved this so much. Maybe my very, very favourite read of 2023, actually. I mentioned that one might overtake Clytemnestra this is that one. This book is a delightful little weirdo. Took me a moment to get into it. It's very unique. It's unlike anything else. Took me a moment to get into it, but by the second half, I was completely besotted with this story. So strange and unique and just like beautifully puzzling. Beautifully strange, I think, is the perfect way to describe this story. Um, I thought it was kind of extraordinary, actually. This was a very special book for me. One of the sequels, this is Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings. So this is the sequel to Magnolia Parks, which landed itself somewhere around the middle, I think. This one will land in the same category. This is a cutie paper freebie, but I think it's probably a little bit lower down than the original Magnolia Parks because I like the story just as much, like the mega rich, ridiculous romances were just as addictive for me. Um, and this one's got like added crime gang drama, but the footnotes that this author uses. I really wish that she would just chill out <laughs> with using the footnotes for like snarky little comments because 
it just kills the storytelling experience for me. Like one or two would be really great, but literally half the page sometimes is taken up by footnotes. Very different from that one. I hope you came for variety. This is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. First time I've ever read this, and I think it is probably now my favorite classic of all time actually. It's right up there with Little Women anyway. It's not super challenging like a lot of the classics are if you're trying to like up your classics intake for 2024. Maybe that's a little personal goal for you. This is a really good one to get stuck in with. It's got a real like gothic haunting feel to it. It's full of twists that I just did not see coming and it completely gripped me right from the start. I just love this story. There's not a whole lot more to say about it to be honest. I think this is probably now actually one of my favourite books of all time, which is a cool little discovery. The Other Side of Mrs Wood by Lucy Barker. It's funny because some of these books I will acknowledge as being like the best books that I read of the year and other ones of them were just like my favourite books of the year and this is one of those that has stuck with me as being being one of the ones that I genuinely enjoyed the most. I could not put this down. It's set in Victorian London and the main character Mrs Wood is a medium. She takes on like a medium apprentice who then becomes her rival. Just a super enjoyable really fun read for me and my favourite parts were the seance moments and getting to kind of like peek behind the curtain. Just loved it. Really stole my heart for some reason, that one. Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This was a cutie little romance. I really respect it for making different decisions. Like it just felt like a breath of fresh air in that kind of genre. It was awesome to read a main character with chronic illness. Very much enjoyed the ginger love interest who genuinely seemed to care about Chloe. Quite often it feels like the men in these books don't actually care. Oh, I love this. I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. I actually did a few classics this year and this was another one that I just thought was such a joy to experience for the first time. It is set in the late 40s and it is the diary of a teenager who is practicing her writing skills and trying to capture their family life into words. It's just lovely, honestly. It's very charming. Charming is the word I would use for this, I think. Really funny at times, although I did love it less after she falls in love. Like, she grows up a little bit and falls in love and it just felt a little bit to me like the main character Cassandra kind of just like lost her magic and optimism um, just a little bit, just kind of took the shine off it slightly for me. Yet more proof that men ruin everything. <laughs> Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, another one that speaks for itself because the hype for this book has been absolutely wild. It's the story of a female scientist set in 1950s America and it's her constant battle to be taken seriously in that field but it's also her life that is littered with trauma and heartache and surprises um, and this honestly left me both laughing and crying simultaneously. Very emotional and I particularly love the dog. <laughs> Although I would say that story hasn't really stayed with me in the same way that a lot of these others have done. Piglet by Lottie Hazel. I am excited to tell you about this one. I got an advanced copy of this sent to me. I read this quite a long time ago, like in the late summer, um, but I read this in one sitting. I did not put this book down. I can't quite pinpoint what it is about this book that is so good but it is so good. It's about a woman who discovers that her husband-to-be has betrayed her in the worst kind of way. It is two weeks before their wedding and the whole story just reads like a pressure cooker. <laughs> it's a little bit stressful and just something a little bit different because the story is largely told through food and it feels like such a passion for food that it's almost impossible to not feel that yourself. It probably sounds bonkers honestly, but it just works so well. This was five stars every day of the week for me, but actually just because I think this is extra relevant for me and my audience, um, I would say check the trigger warnings for eating and food related issues before you dive into this. Wayward by Amelia Hart. Wow, putting this tier ranking together is just making me realise that I had a really great year of reading actually. I read some absolute bangers this year. <laughs> this is like an intergenerational slightly witchy. I would kind of use the word supernatural more than like magic. It's three different female narratives through a family and how their stories are interconnected and how their past and present kind of actually end up helping each other. It's all about legacy and the courage of women which is always really inspiring to read and it just has this really kind of delicious slightly haunting very atmospheric supernatural feel to it. Oh, Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I feel like you can tell which of my absolute like top tier books. I feel like I'm just like, oh. So this is six main characters, just like your classic ragtag bunch of misfits that all kind of stumble across each other. They set out on this kidnapping quest together and every member of the gang is just 
so likeable. They're all just extremely cool and the heist is really exciting and unpredictable. I thought the world building in particular was really cool and unique. It almost has this kind of like Victorian-y steampunk vibe to it, which is something a little bit different. And I actually can't wait to get the second part of this duology from the library. This has just reminded me that I really want to read the next one of these because the cliffhanger at the end really got me. Okay, you'll be very glad to hear we are into the last 10. We are nearly there. All Girls by Emily Layden. I talked about this recently. This is a story that's told from a variety of nine different girls perspectives. I would preface this one by saying approach it like a series of short stories because otherwise you're going to be disappointed in how you don't fully get like sucked in. But they are all kind of navigating the usual growing up teenagehood, girlhood, high school politics against a very dark background. I thought this felt genuinely very intimate. It's almost like diaries for the selection of girls. It's really moving and it's a big thumbs up for me. Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. Definitely not the easiest read. It is self-harm related and it's about a girl whose story kind of starts out at a psychiatric ward, but a really captivating, one of those network of characters that feels really precious. You know when you find like a community of characters in a story that you just genuinely really hold in your heart? This had me rooting so hard for Charlie, so this is definitely a little embroidered creation for me. The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This was such a strange one for me because I started to read this early on in the year, in the summer, and I just did not get on with it. I could not connect with it properly, but I picked it up again when the colder months set in and I absolutely fell in love with this book. So that just goes to show you the vibes have gotta be right. This is the most magical story with such an amazingly intricate setup. Like the detail and world building of this is really something to behold. And it just creates this otherworldly circus in such a magical way. It's really beautiful writing that is tinged with this quite unique sense of melancholy to it. This is another one that was a special little book to me. I would, if, I wish, kind of wish there was a separate tier for special books because a few of these would land on there. My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. It's very much insta love, so if you don't like that, it'll probably annoy you a little bit, but it's just really cute and silly and a very fun time. Oh, we're gonna have to go for the adjusted knees here. I've been sitting on the floor for quite a long time now. Boy Parts by Eliza Clark completely bonkers, twisted and bitter and gruesome and weird and messed up, but in the most deliciously dark way possible. But it's also extremely funny at points, which I really wasn't expecting. A completely unhinged read. I saw someone on Goodreads call this American Psycho, but for hot girls. And that sums it up so perfectly. I was obsessed. This was one of my favorite books of 2023, for sure. Oh, on the other end of the scale, Brutes by Diz Tate. This was such a disappointing one for me, which I absolutely hate to say. You know I hate saying that. I always try and focus on the merits of any book, even if it wasn't my favourite, but I just thought I was going to really adore this like mysterious, ethereal girlhood story. Um, I'd seen it compared to Virgin Suicide, so I was really excited for this one. It's very no plot, just vibes, which I don't hate at all, but this one is to the extent that most of the time I Basically, I had no idea what was going on. I'm all about a book that feels like a confusing, hazy fever dream that's like really captivating. And I love a story that feels really kind of grubby and gritty. So I can't even quite put my finger on why this was disappointing for me, but it was just not my favorite. I, I, wanted, it, I wanted it to be something else. <laughs> Rouge by Mona Awad. This, however, was a favorite. She is establishing herself as like one of my favorite authors. This is the one that I was talking about that is perfect gothic fairy tale vibes. It's about Belle whose mother dies and her death sparks the discovery of this like cult-like spa that her mother somehow got involved with and used to visit before she died. It's absolutely nuts and a little bit confusing but in a very addictive kind of way because you're waiting for answers that don't necessarily land on your plate. Horror element of this is so seductive and delicious. And I genuinely found it very spooky, very unsettling. Love delving into that like complicated mother-daughter relationship, beauty standards, obsession. I was fully intrigued by this story. And by the end, my mouth was agape, I tells you. A gape. 49, Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. This was a revisited old uni read for me and I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, actually. I would say this is more of a challenging classic than some of the others that I have mentioned. I think Rebecca and I Capture the Castle are much more accessible than this one and the next one, 
um, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. It's always nice to push your brain slightly when it feels like it's rotting. It's very witty, it's choppy, it's that kind of like stream of consciousness style of story. It interweaves a whole array of passing characters which I really liked. I love when you have that kind of like stream of consciousness that it just gives you like little flashes into loads of different characters. But then it's also laced with these really powerful moments and passages. Um, I did find it quite exhausting to keep up with at times. I did have to like go back and reread certain paragraphs every now and again if I, if my concentration was wandering. Um, but I enjoyed this more than I thought I would. Oh, we made it. I can't believe it. I thought we were going to be here for like five hours. Uh, last but not least, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde was my last read of 2023. Keep it classy, but did I select this as my last book of the year? Purely because it was short and I needed to read a book in a day to finish my reading goal for the year? Perhaps, who can really say? Not that you need my stupid opinion on a book like this, but it is as iconic as it is supposed to be. It is a killer story. Just such a genius concept for a story. Um, slightly fancy prose at times, just to kind of like reflect the vibe of the characters. And it was a good time, apart from the slight dismissal of women in general. <laughs> kind of annoyed me slightly, but hey. Uh, R.I.P. Dorian Gray. You would have loved 80s pop classic Forever Young. And with that one comfortably landing itself pretty much bang in the middle of my total reads for 2023, that, my friends, is a tier ranking wrap. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I actually really enjoy making these. I did one with the TikTok books ages ago and it was a fun time and that kind of inspired me to do this one again. So I hope you enjoyed this absolute whirlwind whip ride. I can't wait to have a chat with you in the comments. Let me know if any of these were on your list last year, if they are on your TBR for 2024. If you agree or disagree with any of my rankings here, I've probably made some controversial choices without even realising. Looking forward to a whole new year of chatting your ear off about absolute nonsense. Um, and all I will say is stay tuned because there's some news. And that's all. I hope you are really well. I hope you had a great start to the year. I hope you're looking after yourself, making kind choices for yourself. Make sure you are. And I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.